Do we have enough people? You are good now. You yeah. are. So we're going to call the meeting to order at 6.05. I have one amendment to um, the agenda, which is to add an executive session before 7D, which will be the future planning of um, TBDS. Um, just to go over kind of a little house cleaning. Please behave yourself tonight. We don't need added stress. Um, the public, you may comment when um, we're in that public engagement and comment session. Other than that, this is a business meeting for the board um, to review the items on our agenda. Uh, we will be presenting the school budget, um, revisiting the high school FY21 announcement of tuition and the future planning of TBDS as well as board reports and consent agenda. Um, any other additions that people need to put onto the agenda? All right, let's move on. Um, hello, people. Anybody have any public comment? Yes. All right. I do. Hi. Hi, Sam. Hi. Introduce Allison yourself. I'm Sam Powers. This is Allison Lively. We're representatives from the Committee for Student Voice. Uh, student Advisory Council, I just want to read a pre-written back there, I wrote it five minutes ago, <laughs> a statement. Um, the Committee for Student Voice understands that there are many important issues the school board deals with. We also appreciate that many are time sensitive, but in chartering the Student Advisory Council, the Unified School Board made a commitment to the expression of student voice. We feel in removing our group from your agenda that initial dedication to hearings from students is softened. Again, we completely understand the difficult situation of the board, but we are asking that any future commitments be respected. Thank you for your time. And I'll just respond to that. We unfortunately have postponed you, not removed you permanently yes. from a future agenda. So I just want to make that clear. It's not that we don't want to hear your voice and hear your concerns um, about the school or education and other student hot topics, so to speak, but we did need to postpone it because we had such a uh, intense agenda that we had to hit. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate your sentiments. Okay, anyone else? Forward. All right, moving forward. Mary Beth? Um, very brief superintendent's report this, this evening in the spirit of um, staying focused on the, the critical budget issues in front of us. Um, very briefly, you have the enrollment here for January 1, which is at 1,004. And what you'll notice <coughs> that has been added to this enrollment report, it will be included in all future ongoing reports is the request that you made, Jim. So the um, tuition, the operating school district pupils, <coughs> pupils funded by tuition, and then um, the sponsored by operating district are the school choice students that we have. So you have that information. Um, the other piece that I wanted to highlight for the board that is something exciting for our area. We will be continuing to talk to you about how our schools will be involved. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the United States Mint has a America the Beautiful Quarters program. And for the state of Vermont, they are highlighting the Marsh Billings Rockefeller National Historic Park. Um, you see a, a picture of what that coin is going to look like. And one of the things that was ex exciting for, for many of us is that stewardship is actually on that coin, directly connected to our portrait of a graduate. Uh, so we will be working with the Mint, with the national parks and the schools to have um, an event to celebrate this in the fall. But I, I did want to make you aware that this is coming and uh, I, I think a positive and exciting thing for our district. Thank you. Okay, board reports. Um, from the chair and vice chair, we obviously have been involved in uh, putting together with the finance committee um, our budget presentation for this evening. Uh, we won't be voting on it tonight uh, because we just want to wrap up some more numbers um, and make sure that all the line items are in the proper areas within the budget. Um, I also attended a webinar 
on the state's arbitrator's decision for um, future negotiations. Um, I will forward actually that information to the full board so that it's a lot of information to digest, but you should just be aware. Um, they also sent us the formal arbitrations findings so that when we go into negotiations, we are all on the same page. Um, the NEA unfortunately has been given giving incorrect dates and information of when all of this goes into effect to the teachers, which is very unfortunate. Um, but it is status quo from July 1st until December <coughs> 31st for teachers and administrators. And then we go into an 80-20 split as of January 1st, 2021. The contracts will have to go to three-year contracts. Um, as for support staff, they are status quo for the next two years. And then you can only increase their health care by 2% each year following. Um, but I just wanted you guys to have an, an idea of how we're moving forward with this. Patty, Melena, and I will start negotiations, I think after we get through the budget session, um, starting probably the end of February, early March with the support staff. Um, so that's just the heads up. And that's all I have to report for now. Buildings and grounds? Yeah, um, so we just met on Wednesday. I'm sorry, but I forgot all my stuff tonight. <coughs> so I was just trying to look at some notes. Um, basically, uh, we met with Joe and um, with certain uh, topics like TPVS. I'm sure we can get into more detail when we get to that, so I don't want to don't get into that too much now. Um, but in general, I guess the immediate things came up with about $30,000 worth of stuff at all the campuses that should really be done this summer. So pretty pretty immediate needs. Um, and then identified around $380,000 worth of stuff that really we're looking at probably going to have to be dealt with in the next couple of years. Um, couple meaning two, three, not, not five to ten. Um, and then uh, talked about Prosser Valley School is, a, is another category as well. Um, the biggest thing when we get into talking about budget, and we can talk about it more then, is <coughs> my concerns that I brought up last year too with just not having enough in that building's reserve. Um, the, I, th I thought of just before I walked in here, but what, what we should be actually doing is something more like what Union Arena is doing, where you know when, when you buy things, you have depreciation, right? We should be having money going aside into this reserve until it's building up, so when you have a boiler that dies, you have the money to replace it. That's kind of how it works. I didn't really think of it until I was thinking about EJ's presentation. <laughs> That's exactly what we, we need to have here, too. Um, so I just get concerned knowing that, you know, even if we continue to put aside the $125,000 into that, um, if we have some of these singular crises occur, they would take up all that money. And then if a second one happened, we'd have to be scrounging for money again. Um, so again, when we get to the budget, I can talk a little bit more about that. And Joe's here tonight, too, if there's specific questions. Um, <coughs> so that's, my main, that's my main concern going forward. Okay. Any questions? Moving on, campus configurations. Um, so we had our first meeting on the 19th of December. Um, it was a very, um, I think a good and productive meeting. We talked you know, a little bit about how, um, at least in the board minutes, we were tasked with deciding what happened to TPVS, but as a group, you know, thought that we all wanted to take the approach of looking at the district holistically the strengths and shortcomings of all the campuses um, and you know how that was going to work as a whole, paying a lot of attention as well to some of those things that maybe go beyond the building and um, the curriculum in them, things like the culture um, in each school and the sense of community um, in each building and taking all that into consideration. Um, and we were going to, Maggie uh, Mills, had agreed to put together the start of a survey um, to go out at different levels, whether it was just to administrators or to community members, um, about public feeling about all of all of the different um, buildings in our district and communities in our district, 
and um, try to look at where our approach should be from there. I think we had a lot of, uh, I guess, <coughs> maybe lack of um, direction in terms of knowing what we should be doing um, with regards to TPVS because we haven't, we don't have an open building there yet too. So I think we're in somewhat of a holding pattern until we really have some commitment as to what's going to happen at that facility. And that conversation will continue tonight, tonight yeah. and we'll take that yeah. vote and then you guys can move forward can with forward. more yeah. of that conversation. Yep. Yeah. Great. Any questions? Okay. Community engagement. Um, we met on the 9th, the 9th, in Sam's car because it was really cold. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't open yet when we got there. <laughs> <laughs> so I pull up and both uh, Jen and Claire are like this, and I go, get in the car. <laughs> so we did the first portion of the so meeting in my car. Right um, <laughs> so Smart. we're looking at, um, let's see, Sam's been doing postings out to the various communities through the listservs and Facebook. Um, so we're you know, doing our, our best to get the word out about what is happening here. Um, Let's see. We were talking about a lot of the big things coming down the pipeline and thinking in terms of um, developing some fact pages for the website or just to have um, in poster form. Um, yeah, like with the Barnard merger and everything like that and trying to start getting that kind of information that's on bullet points, you know, of like, okay, so this happened, this is what you need to know, you know. Um, Especially right. going into the vote because all the communities are going to have to vote on that and mm -hmm. um, so letting the public kind of know what that votes about mm -hmm. um, obviously you know thinking about um, communications about Prosper Valley but we don't you know know what to say on that yet mm -hmm. um, thinking about the budget and communicating out what this new budget mm -hmm. is about as well so that people go to town meeting and understand what they're voting what you know what the board's been considering and um, and what we're thinking about for priorities and let's see lastly um, so a, I have a lot of notes Can <laughs> I add a couple yeah sure notes? absolutely um, so Claire also has gotten somebody to donate their time to help put together a brochure Okay. Um, for the schools and also a photographer to come and take some photos for us to just have and um, for resources for the brochure social media anything mm -hmm. website so that's pretty cool yeah um, and then um, we also added the um, community e engagement um, email to all the principals um, newsletters so now that instead of just Woodstock I'm going to be getting all the town newsletters and then I can be posting all of those and not just Woodstock's um, so so try to diversify the message and we may be able you may be able to take tonight's slideshow and put it on the website because mm -hmm. it explains the entire budget process right. and also the implications of how it affects our communities within the district. So that right. may be an easy way to walk through through it with people. Um, okay, great, thank you. And I just have a question about that. Do we, I can't remember if I did this in the beginning of the year or not. Do we sign release forms for our kids to be in photos that are used by the district? Is, yeah. that, some, is yes. that something you guys are, will be on, like, following up at the administrative level to know that any of the photos that we're using are so each principal released. has a list and they know, he or she knows who in their school cannot okay. be in any photography so we would definitely Great. and we were going to let them know when that person was coming <coughs> anyway to like <coughs> schedule it not just like show up with a photographer perfect thank you let me, let me just add one more thing um so we're also thinking about um, this is a longer term project, maybe for, I don't know, March or after the budget's done. <laughs> um, but um, starting to do some of the survey work that we've been talking about at the board level to get about the new building process and all of that to get people's input and have a way of also sharing what people are thinking, you know, what across the communities, what people's opinions are. So that's another piece that we're looking at. 
And maybe in that survey too, you can ask them what some of their concerns are or their questions are, mm -hmm. so that we can share that with all of our communities because I think it just opens up the conversation even more. It also alerts the new building committee to what people's questions and concerns may be that mm -hmm. aren't being heard currently, um, you know, because it's a big topic and a lot of people are involved in it in different areas of that conversation <coughs> so we're not all privy to the entire collective at times mm -hmm. and Claire was also uh, talking about putting together a um, frequently asked questions from the from the tours yes. kind of flyer out yep. as well with the answers to those so we should also talk about doing so that the correct well. information is given yeah out. yeah that sounds good great um, well, Finance Committee, you'll hear from us in a couple minutes. Um, hiring Committee. We haven't met yet. We need to find dates. <laughs> we have challenging schedules on our committee. Okay. Negotiations Committee, I just updated you on that. Patty and Melina will be with me to start those negotiations within the next month. Uh, new Build Committee. Yeah, we had a pretty busy week uh, last week for the new build committee. Um, had uh, a meeting of the uh, the committee on Monday. Um, really, the focus of that meeting, I think, was getting closer and closer to two topics. One is the state approval process and the urgency around that, and then also uh, private fundraising. Really, you know, as the numbers um, come into clearer focus, the need uh, to make some real real progress on the private fundraising front. We also had uh, two meetings uh, with LaValle Brensinger Architects. We got them reengaged uh, Tuesday. Um, Lee Sherwood and uh, Lisa Pecora, uh, the project manager from LBA, uh, were out to uh, kick off the next phase of uh, detailed design activities uh, with the uh, subcommittee of the of the uh, new build committee. Uh, uh, great meeting. Um, I did kind of want to report out a little bit on uh, some of the topics that we covered there. Um, kind of at a high level uh, there again, we talked about uh, this, the implications of the state approval process. Um, we talked about, uh, from a configuration standpoint, uh, sixth grade, uh, where, um, you know, if, in, a, in a future state of the district, what the, the best place for sixth grade would be, whether that uh, belongs at the elementary schools or in the middle schools, that's obviously a, a larger board decision, but something that um, will certainly impact the, the size of a, of a new build. Um, uh, we discussed a number of kind of aspects contemplated for the new building design and their desirability versus their affordability uh, in terms of a list of things that had come out of, of prior discussions. And then also talked about um, kind of project cost impacts due to escalations. Um, there was also a meeting on uh, Friday. Uh, um, Lisa and, and Lee met with a group of faculty to talk about some of the more uh, detailed um, kind of curriculum aspects <coughs> for the new middle school, high school building as we kind of work on some of those programmatic refinements. On the uh, fundraising front, uh, has some um, couple pieces of good news. One, and uh, this was reported at the New Build Committee meeting uh, last week, uh, all the money that had uh, previously been pledged, that there was, as you may recall, a $200,000 uh, matching grant, uh, another 25, another 10, and then since then, um, uh, another couple thousand dollars in kind of smaller contributions. All that money has been received by the district in the account that we had set up for that purpose, so that's great news. Uh, in addition, um, a group of us um, attended the Woodstock Economic Development Commission uh, meeting on uh, Saturday morning. Uh, Mary Beth, Bob, Jason Jurbitko, and I, and we found out uh, this morning uh, um, wonderful news that the uh, Woodstock EDC uh, granted our uh, application for fifty thousand uh, dollars toward the, the next phase of the architects uh, services so special thanks Sherry for your work on the application Jason's not here but I know he worked hard on that as well uh, that was uh, was tremendous news from town of Woodstock mm -hmm. questions for me I have one question yeah. um, the approval from the state mm -hmm. that approval also approves I believe the square footage based on the number of children is that correct so you know there's a lot of information that's in a guide that yeah. is a little bit dated and we've talked about that at our right. meetings um, in terms of I, I can't answer definitively you know what uh, if the current you know status of you know and the implications of what the state approval means mm -hmm. there are um, aspects of square footage in there in terms of does that mean that the um, you know, the project wouldn't be approved beyond that you can't build it or you're, you're on your own 
in the prior context that really had um, had a lot to do with state funding, right? And, and there's no state funding, right? Yeah. So where we are at this point is we're going to have to put all those questions, you know, put all that in our application, um, kind of prompt the state to you know, give us clarity on that and see what comes back. Okay, because if they gave you restrictions to how large that building could be or or would that would then the architects have to kind of right size the building i guess is it, like it does that go hand in hand in the conversation with the architect the document that i sent you right from the pamphlet talks about when there was funding mm -hmm. and that's what i think we have to go on basically but that document is somewhere around 12 to 15 years old it has a square footage of how much you're supposed to spend that no one you're not building for that price so the, the, so the main goal the main, the the main goal here is is to just get approved and find out what the limitations are okay right. we need those but, but going into it there is it states underneath the old way that you can come in let's say with a 500 square foot and that's we're not doing that <laughs> but 500 square foot per <laughs> child yeah, yeah. and the state only says you're good for a hundred Okay. which is below what the state right. says also mm -hmm. they're just saying they will cover you for x amount of students at 100 square feet anything above that and that's in that it's document your essentially <laughs> is your responsibility that you wouldn't get funding on mm -hmm. and, it, and for our purposes now we know we're not going to get funding at least not the, right. term. So the question is will we be exempted from penalty phase right okay. for that additional right. cost right. and I, I think that's a legitimate question to ask okay. the, state. But the, the but other thing i can add in fact um lee just sent me a communication today because we had talked um there is a piece to that application that does ask about enrollment in square footage mm -hmm. and uh, you know to your point jim the what's currently out there was quite a while ago when they actually were doing reimbursements so are they going to hold to that or not is a completely open question what you know one of the things that we thought made some sense in terms of the application is to compare it to msba square footage per enrollment that's the current standard in mass the msba is the group that does new building projects in massachusetts mm -hmm. and they have some pretty strict criteria that of what they will fund so currently um and and msba as well districts tend to go over by a little bit um and just it, pick up the cost with their district but um using their square footage um it's about 215 square feet per student currently what what's being looked at at here in the building is 230 square feet per student so pretty close um, so that would be one of the things that we would look at along with trying to get clarity about whether or not they're going to hold it all to square footage rates from 12 or so now years I, th ago. this is one of the things that i made a big stink about and just like we're moving forward we're putting it together I don't think they're going to hold you to that square footage, and I don't think they're going to hold you to that dollar per square foot. Okay. The main thing is getting us so they say, yes, we approve you doing this project, so we don't get the penalty phase. Okay. The other thing in the meeting, I think you forgot to mention, was the meeting that we had the full board meeting on that Monday night, was it? Was it Monday? The full, the full uh, new board meeting committee? The, one of the other questions that I've been asking for, and then the town manager of Killing has come in for, is also saying that, there needs to be a civil engineer pulled in to start checking the constraints around the property. And Lee had told us on that mor that one morning, the morning meeting, that the, the, next, the, the next, this phase will include that. So, oh, okay. so the question that I had that was standing in the, in the uh, motion was that what are we going to get for? Mm -hmm. It's being answered. <coughs> okay. All right. So. And then just to give clarity, because there was some <coughs> questions from fellow board members over vacation, the vote in June was to approve the financial feasibility of a new building project. To, to research. Right, to research. <laughs> and, yes. yes, okay. It was, we did not approve a new building, because a lot of questions right. that come up, <laughs> what have we approved, what have, but it's to research the financial feasibility of that. Correct? Yeah, that's what we're pursuing. Okay, good. Yeah. And so, then I guess the last thing that I wanted yeah. to um, just provide as, a, as an update is um, just some press um, from this weekend, Vermont Digger, and I'll send this around. Uh, pretty interesting. The South Burlington um, New Middle School High School project, as everyone may recall, that's 
has a sticker price of uh, $210 million on it. Uh, they published uh, detailed uh, financial uh, impacts to voters in their district this weekend. So I'll get that around and we can kind of see that as a comparison. Are they completely funding this new build by taxpayers' money? Yeah, that's my understanding, yeah. Pamela? I have a couple questions, but they also have had a 25% population and enrollment increase in the past 10 years. Okay. So they have big tax base at this point. Right. Um, just two, two things, Ben. Um, one, the fundraising, not for the, not the smaller fundraising, but the fundraising fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm unclear if that has actually begun or not, and I'm wondering if, if, or if it has or if it hasn't, can that process be made more transparent so that as donations are coming in that, you know, like lots of places have like the thermometer, like we, s that the public is aware what's going on because there's just so many questions about it at this point and, and I frankly have no idea so I don't know how to answer sure. them. Yeah, no, to date our uh, focus has been on the smaller fundraising. Um, mm -hmm. At the New Build uh, Committee meeting last week, uh, Jen and uh, Jason Dubitko, who were you know, handling that aspect, you know, provided an a overview of kind of what's in, uh, in store for uh, the private fundraising aspect of the project. I think the takeaway there is um, that it's going to take a lot of work and it's going to be you know, a pretty significant uh, amount of effort and time. And uh, where that's going to need to uh, begin from here is um, really <coughs> identifying people in each of our uh, towns um, to you know, develop lists of, of uh, potential donors, um, to get really get to work on you know, the, the regional, uh, topic-specific, national um, institutions that we can you know, pursue for, for fundraising. Okay. But I think um, if I were to, um, I guess from your standpoint, I think that the answer would be you know, the thermometer is, is not been moved. Yep. <laughs> right? yes. So okay. uh, we're, we're really still in the planning stage. Still in the door. We haven't taken it out yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other thing I wanted to say is I understand that the meeting with the, the initial, not the faculty, but the initial meeting with Lee and mm -hmm. Lisa, I think you said, um, was not open, was not a public meeting, was a working meeting. Correct. And, and I feel that given the amount of sort of uncertainty, <coughs> questions, confusion that's going on about this project, um, in our communities that it would be better to, this is just a comment, my opinion, it would be better to not have a working meeting, especially with the architect, because what he has to say is in the public interest. And um, i just like it if you would consider that, that point of view. Okay. okay. My last question here is that the 25 and the 10 and the small single digits have been deposited and the match. Has the supervisor union put in their 30K yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's I question one. That <laughs> Have we made that transfer to that account? No, not yet. Okay, and so at that point, we, we said that we, were, we needed 130 for phase one of this scope that Lee, the architect, is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the 25, the 10, and the 30, plus the matching on that. The single digits mm -hmm. that came in after that and this 50,000 is going towards phase two and we have not approved phase two yet. Correct. Supposed to go. And I just want to make sure yeah. the bigger one was is have we put the 30,000 over yet from, <laughs> from us. That's what I want to make sure. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. That's all really positive. Yeah, because we got some, some good, yeah, good some momentum good in the new year. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Uh, policy committee. So um, we just met this morning, actually. So we don't have anything for you tonight because there wasn't time to put it on the to warn warn it. But uh, we worked on five policies today, and two of them we'll have for you to um, for first reading at our next meeting. And those are going to be gender identity and expression and medication policies. And then we're continuing to work on allergy, intradistrict choice, education records. Um, and then others that we didn't get to today, but hope to next time are naming rights, safety, and parent concerns. Wait, what were the last ones? Sorry, one? um, naming rights, safety, and parent concerns. Thank you. Okay, great. Can I have a motion on the table to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any questions on the consent agenda? All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Can we at least tell the public what the approved excursion is and the donations? Or at least Mary Beth, why don't you expand on that? 
The other item is just the minutes. So. I'm actually going to toss that one over to Gary. Yeah, so this excursion is um, with the Interact Club, which is a school club that's affiliated with the, the Rotary. They've been running trips, service learning trips like this for many years. Um, and without board approval, what we've decided is since it is a, a school sponsored club, some of our staff members go on this trip, and there are students that it's, it would be proper to have it on the school <coughs> agenda. Um, some of the checks that are coming for this have been gone through all of things like the insurance policy and proper chaperones and all of those things go together in this group. They're traveling with an organization called, uh, take a moment, uh, Global Brigades. So that's the group that traveling with Japan. Uh, and the other item is the donation. Yeah, I can, I can speak to that quickly. We had a um, student intern at uh, Woodstock Elementary School in the counseling office that was doing some really strong work with our students. Um, we um, b believe that there is a need to continue that level of support uh, that she was offering. Um, so there was a private donation to fund $2,500 to help cover the cost of her continuing on a couple days a week. And then that was matched by some Medicaid money that we have here. So nothing coming out of the operating budget, but will give us some additional capacity for this. Okay. Any other questions? I know, it's just the problem. Okay, so, yes. yeah, thank you. Okay, um, so on December 16th, 2019, the, vote, uh, the board voted to move the date of the district budget vote. It was confirmed by our lawyers that we were not legally allowed to move that date as board members, but it had to be voted on by our district voters. Um, so we need to rescind that uh, vote from December 16th, 2019. Yeah? I don't believe we have to rescind the vote because the vote was, if possible, I made the motion and said that we need to check with legal first, and if so, then you could move forward. That was the motion. So, so the answer is we can't. So it's no sense. I mean, if you want a motion to rescind it, <laughs> make the motion to rescind it. Please. Make the motion to rescind the uh, moving of the school budget. Date. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion on the table, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Just want to dot her eyes and cross her teeth. Well, I was dotting my eyes and cross my teeth too. I made a motion. Okay. So, <laughs> then, so then the next question to the conversation is whether or not we want to discuss and vote on the board putting forth to the voters on the ballot for March 2nd to move the vote for the budget um, to uh, the first Tuesday in April for future budget approvals or votes. So I will make a motion for us to put on the um, ballot, the upcoming ballot, to move the vote of the um, school budget to the first Tuesday in April. No, second. Okay. And we have a discussion. I think it's really important <coughs> that we have all the information in front of us as you're being new in finance. I mean, you're finding out, but we get stuff late. And if we're really going to put a budget together, I mean, four weeks is a lot from, um, you know, everything we get from the state is saying it's a um, estimate. And the funny thing is, is they usually give you um, the actuals after you won your vote. <laughs> so everything's already in the book. Um, I think we should approve to move it to the ballot and let the voters make the choice and hear from your town clerks and everything else because they may say no. But it's not a good idea, but well, at least get the conversation. Melina? I just want to make sure we have, if it's an April vote for negotiation purposes, there's in contracts. Does that give us enough time? That's why we picked April. I wanted May. You wanted May? <laughs> 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 oh, that, that's exactly right. That's why we picked April okay. so that we. So we're fine. So that our contracts go out on time. Okay. Yes. So isn't there a question from the town clerks about cost? Of yes, setting there were. And, and who is going to cover that cost? Correct. So are we assuming you're covering the, the district's covering the cost, the town's covering the cost? It's a question we have to ask our towns and our clerks of whether or not it's the town's responsibility or our responsibility. Sam? 
Are we confident that if we move it to April, we will have all that information, or will it only extend the deadline and they go, oh, well, you have more time now, so we'll just, you know, give it to you late. Give it. Are we, like, confident that that's really going to make that big of a difference? It's, well, historically, over the last 15 years, that month of February mm -hmm. and after town vote, we are given the actual, like, without a doubt, here are the actual numbers. Okay. So sometimes the numbers do shift and other times they don't shift. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the year, yeah. whether or not they're gonna shift on us. But we have seen shifts that then affect the budget that had already been ben approved. Ben? I was just gonna say, I mean, it has to do with the timing of when we have to have our numbers submitted. Correct. Right? And, it's, um, and by just getting a little bit more time, it can have a, a pretty good impact because, you know, instead of having, what is it, January? When it's January 21st that yeah. we have to have our budget into the towns yeah. to be within the town book yeah. and to go onto the ballot. So if we had to have it in, say, mid-February, that would give us that much more time to mm -hmm. be able to solidify some more numbers. But that's really it, is that timing of when we have to submit that final budget to the town clerks. Okay. That's our challenges. So to answer the question that you really threw out was if it will give them more time or whatever, mm -hmm. the majority of the, t quite a few towns still have it on that <coughs> first Tuesday in March. I would throw the question over to Mike saying what does the, um, what does the auditor, the accounting firm, say about, I think you've had this conversation with with him about why we do or why we don't and which way it's healing he, he suggested that it makes a lot more sense um, to push the date out because you'll have a lot more information from uh, like the agency of education which some of the things that we need to have to provide you guys in the community with the best set of estimates that we can he was always kind of the last 10 years or so he's been uh, always head scratching about why a lot of districts have it so early before information is released so, which is a suggestion that he made, I think it makes sense. I, I don't think it means that we, we would delay all the prep work that goes into it. Uh, I, having known what I know now, I, I could have started it earlier, I would have. Um, that's it. Yeah. <coughs> Pam? Um, do we have any information on districts that do it later and how their turnout is? Turnouts are? I Make, do not have You know, just because town meeting day brings a lot of people to vote, so. Mm -hmm. What is our next vote? In two weeks. Mm -hmm. We could postpone the vote until we sure. get those informa that information. Yeah, it's with Ryan on now, yeah. so if anyone has any other questions, we can come back at the next meeting. Yeah. Bryce? Um, I'm going to echo Pam on that one, because that's what I was mostly concerned about. Um, Though there's been some benefits listed, I do just worry about turnout and yeah. how, that, how that affects things because I think most of us know when we have votes that are not on town meeting day in our towns, turnout's not always that great. Right. Even if your town has eight or 900 people, if only 50 people show up, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time with that sometimes. Um, on the other side, though, I guess I see some benefit to uh, town meeting day. You can't talk about ballot items, right? So if you had the information, <coughs> uh, or better information on town meeting day, even though it wasn't being voted on town meeting day, you could have open floor discussions in your town meetings, Correct. Uh, on oh, it, which yeah. we can't currently do. So yeah. that could be a benefit to town meeting, having a lot of people there to hear their voices out of a vote. Yeah. That'd be good. So um, why don't we find out the answers to those questions and postpone the vote until our next meeting? Okay. Good. Emma and I say yes. Yeah, we remove it. <laughs> I'm just moving on. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just keep going. All right. Um, we're going to hit our finance presentation for the proposed budget. <coughs> and at our next meeting, we will uh, vote to approve or not approve it. Mary Beth is my Vanna White tonight, <laughs> so I don't have to stand up in front of you. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. So the structure of the budget. Um, the way that we put a budget together this year is for FY21, which is the budget that we've created. You want a chair? 
is that the FY21 budget includes the WCUD, the Barnard, and the WCSU budgets. Um, the costs in the WCUD are listed per school, including a general WCUD line items that are shared within the district. The reason why we broke it out per school is so that as Mary Beth reports back to us in her annual report, we can start looking at our each individual campus's per pupil spend so that we know where we are within each campus. Um, now when you look at a budget and you start designing it, you include the actuals. Well this year we're including the actuals from FY18 and FY19 as well as the projected budget for FY20 budget and then the year-to-date spending for FY20's budget. Um, the reason why you look at the actuals from the two previous years traditionally but we're going back three years instead is because you want to see how the books closed and what the audits showed from those budget line items correct okay um, and then when you have your current budget that we're now working in you always include what the projected budget numbers were and then you include the year-to-date spends and that shows us if we were on target if we were ahead or behind um, the books and audit for FY18 have just been closed as of last week um, and the books and audit for FY19 are currently being reviewed and we expect to see them completed by the end of January early February this is another reason why we really needed some more time to put together this budget um, because these things had not been closed out or audited in the appropriate time frame they should have been. So I got to say thank you to Mike because he has been working around the clock to get the numbers that we need and to make sure that they have been appropriate appropriately placed where they should have been within those past budgets. Um, so thank you, thank you very much for that. Okay, moving on. Okay, year over year budget breakdown. Um, you see FY20 and FY21. Um, the biggest difference in the total combined budget for FY21 is that we're seeing an 8.18 increase or a $1.3 million increase in the budget line items. Um, as we move on to FY21 budget drivers, um, health cost increases total $425,000. That is a 12.9 increase to our health care premiums that we are picking up. Um, we also have contractual obligations which total $529,000. What that means is that this is our last year of contractual obligations of placing all of our teachers within one combined um, salary grid. And within this next year, they will all be placed properly within the grid at the step that they should be on um, based on the years of experience of working within the district as well as their educational uh, background. Um, as I've said before, we are one of the few districts within the entire state that now has one salary grade for all of our teachers. Um, so the total cost of both health care and contractual obligations totals $954,000 and accounts for 75% of the FY21 budget increase of the $1.3 million. So that is a huge hefty price tag for us as we moved forward for the FY21 budget. Um, we are hiring now or expanding the job for Jennifer Staden for uh, pre-K to 12 curriculum coordinator. That adjustment will be $13,000. Buildings and grounds maintenance fund. Um, last year we only had $50,000 dedicated to that fund. We're upping it to 125 additional monies 
um, on top of that 50,000. And when I talk about increased revenues, we could see an increase to a total of $250,000, which we desperately need to start building since we are now overseeing six buildings within the district. We can't do nothing. Um, budget oversights that we had not anticipated from FY19's budget is $135,000. Any questions? Keep going. Pam? Yeah, just um, the in the board book that went out the other day before the weekend, it said 2% yeah. for Barnard, but now it said 8% in that yeah, first. So if you was that back, just a typo before? Back, that's not a typo. Um, what, it, what it actually does here is it, it's saying it's an 808 percent increase to the total budget. But overall, for just what, because you were not in the um, district last year. Mm -hmm. So we took your cost of 845, 789 this year, and you went to the um, 914, 68,000 is the 2% increase. But what, they're, what, what they did here was saying what it is to the total budget. Okay. We brought 800, we brought 800, we brought $914,000 over to the total budget. Um, Mud. I understand. Budget. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Do you like the numbers different though? Like, in, in what was sent out, it's 895, and up there it's 845. Yeah. So, so that or change? This, this, this change. Jim did a nice job explaining, but I mean, in a nutshell, this oh, yeah. first number. This does not include assessments. We're all done with assessments if we combine to emerge, right? That's the whole point. There's a lot of liquidation of the SU in the past to assess out the costs to the community, right? The mud, the bar. This number, I had not taken out the assessment piece, a good chunk of the assessment piece. So to really give it apple to apple, I needed to make that adjustment. And obviously by taking the assessment money out of here, I had to put it up here, right? So that's why you're seeing some slight changes uh, in this. Okay. Yeah. It's just to get everything um, to be tighter. Okay. Well, I'm assuming you'll probably go into detail later, but there's a couple of driver bullet points yep. that you skipped over. Nope, I'm not going to skip over that. Okay. <laughs> so those are the real drivers, though, financially, <coughs> to why we're seeing the increase of the $1.3 million. Now we go to adjustments from FY20 to the FY21 budget. And this is what you're talking mm -hmm. about, Adam. So the board stipends were reduced um, to $15,000 from $42,000. We felt that that was important to take the savings of 25K and move it into the Buildings and Grounds Maintenance Fund um, because we knew that we needed more monies for that Buildings and Grounds and this was a practical way of finding those monies. Um, we also adjusted um, the monies from the AP exam, which we had approved to be per student, <coughs> one AP exam per student, to now one SAT exam per 11th grade student. Um, and like the PSAT that is given each year for, I think, the 10th graders, um, the same thing now will happen for the 11th graders. It will be one SAT exam either during the school year or on a Saturday provided to them. Um, the cost for that is about $8,000. There is a savings, but I didn't have those numbers available to me tonight because we're trying to finalize some of those line items within the budget. Um, there were some elementary FTE school adjustments, which added up to $39,000. And this was within Barnard Academy and uh, Killing yeah, Killington school needs. Um, so those were slight adjustments to FTEs that needed to be changed based on student populations. In, your, in the um, agenda of this rest, this reading as well. Am yeah. I wrong then? Yeah, what I wanted to make sure that I highlighted around that, these are all tweaks like point two. To, for the most part, point twos of positions or some a teacher moving over to Killington, that kind of thing. But I wanted, Barnard is looking at bumping up Spanish. It only had it twice a week. So now we're bumping it up to the standard for the rest of the district um, and increasing some custodial staff. Um, Killington is increasing its guidance counselor, increasing some nurse time, moving a teacher. 
and then uh, at the one place with Reading, we had a guidance council that was 0.4. That was an oversight from last year, so that goes down to 0.2. <coughs> and then there were small TE adjustments in food service, both at Killington and Reading. Those went down due to the number of meals being served. So, Mary Beth, you talked about the reasons why things are going down. Can you talk about why? And this slide here is showing the increase. And you're saying the increases are basically in Barnard and KES. Can you hit to everybody why there are increases yeah. at Barnard? So in, in Barnard, the increases are to bring that school up to the level of all the other schools. So like I said, they did they were not able to put three Spanish um, sessions into their budget last year, so we took care of that. Their custodial staff is not at the same level of other schools. What we're seeing in Killington is for the past three or four years, an increase of about um, 10 or 11 students every year. There had been no adjustments to the school nurse, to the school guidance counselor, but the student enrollment continues. We are anticipating that Killington will hit its highest enrollment yet next year. Um, and so we wanted, we needed to make adjustments to staffing there. Um, this is the strong request of the Killington Elementary School principal. Um, and talking it through with her, I think her reasoning makes a lot of sense. It's the secret sauce in killing him. It's mm -hmm. Stay far away. I think Reading needs to start looking at hosting a, a ski championship. Stay <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of the hill. Nordic. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Um, and then the last <laughs> adjustment from FY20 to FY21 is that there was a deep dive into looking at the e equitable distribution of the elementary instructional supplies and field trip line items. So it was just making sure that we were spending the proper amounts across the board at each campus. So those were slight <coughs> adjustments that have been made. Um, if we move, any, okay, any questions before I move on? Okay. Don't stop. Okay. Um, items that were considered but not added into the FY21 budget, um, I know that we had explored and talked about the K through three Spanish program. Um, to add that into K through three at the proper levels and so on and so forth, it would cost about $210,000. Um, so we as the finance committee recommend that that is not a program at this point that we can afford to add to our programming. Um, five summer days for coaches um, is 6,000 and the theater position is 15K. Um, there is a potential of grant funding for the theater position, but we're still waiting to hear how that possibly may work through. What's the theater position? Um, this year there's a, a kind of a technical person that is working with Masha to help with productions, to help um, run some courses and instruction for groups of students. Um, so she's got uh, an intern that she was able to hire in to help augment her program and cover for things that she can't. Uh, she is also pushing some programs <coughs> into a school day. This gives her some flexibility around that. She had requested um, the 15000 for this position. Um, I think it's, it's a very, very reasonable amount given um, what that program is doing. We um, are looking at a rural education grant that we think will become available, and um, the, the fine arts program is something that could be funded. <coughs> So if that were to come to fruition, we could um, potentially fund this. <laughs> What's the deadline for that grant? It's a federal grant. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. I send emails. We'll check into it. So we were notified um, right after Thanksgiving of our eligibility for the money. So we, in the same day, submitted an application for that. Now we're waiting to see when that will come through. Didn't we approve some grant for? Last year, but it was it was just for one year. So mm -hmm. now we want we. So so Marsha was able to get yeah. outside private grant yeah. funding for this position <coughs> this year, um, and 
but you know, I have complete faith for any of you who know Masha that she is utilizing that to the um, uh, to the highest possible level. Um, she would like to continue with this going forward, but the grant funding was it's for just for one, one year. year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And this is something as we I do. Few, I know. See, this is why you got to re up, Sam. <laughs> um, but this is why, as we do future planning for budgets, to keep in mind these things that we weren't able to add, that those are things that we possibly will want to add in our in our next budget process. Those are these are the things we want to keep in the back of our heads. Um, you want to say something, yeah, sir? I'm talking so, about Melena. So oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just, I have to ask. The K-3 Spanish program, 210K, I'm assuming that's two teachers at least. Where is that coming from? Really well paid. In what? Really well paid teacher. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm not <laughs> Spanish, so I'm just curious. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's the three times mm -hmm. the 45, I believe is how we structured that, which was the recommendation from the committee. Um, you you have to get that teacher in three times a week, so it's a little bit more complicated um, in terms of scheduling because you can't use the same teacher in two schools because you can only get three times a week. That's six days a week, and so one person can't do that. It brings Reading online for that, which is currently not being serviced <coughs> because of the K through three, four through six split. Um, so when you look at all those different factors, it, it, it gets to be pretty expensive. That is the three times a week as, as recommended. Okay. Adam? What, the coaches getting paid in the summer? Very yeah, our, our coaches are doing a lot of professional development for our staff and we are looking to actually put into place some training over the summer so we'd like them to conduct that training. Um, what, we, what we would have liked to have done is expand their contract by five days so that they had five <coughs> days they would be working with principals and teachers over the course of the summer. Um, we are going to be looking to see if we can fund that through professional development money um, over the summer and we'll the 6k the 6k and we will revisit and when things look a little bit better in the budget and it sounds like a small amount of money but you'll see why it's not really a small amount of money yeah mm -hmm. exactly um, Jim so what I was going to say is here is just when you're looking at those three items right there um, every hundred thousand dollars we're at thirty three dollars below the per pupil spending and that's what the finance committee was trying to bring you a budget that would be underneath with thirty three dollars under there's nine hundred and twelve point eight students we're about thirty thousand dollars away from so what we felt was is that we put a budget together and all the numbers are correct here going forward that we left this up to you guys but I just want to make sure you understand that, you know, if you want to stay underneath the penalty phase, like we were trying to, it's $30,000. That's it, total. Okay. Um, what, then I have a question, because I never really understood, and I think you explained something on the five days of summer coaches, that's actually paying the coaches to come in to coach other staff that's already being paid yeah. underneath their contract. <coughs> So that's to provide, um, for them to be the teachers of courses, right, to, to actually be providing professional development. I mean, some of the things that we are looking at um, to help <coughs> offset some of this is to have, have an option, because in the past, teachers have been paid a, a nominal fee, a very small amount, to come in for the day to get training. Um, so one of the ways that we can look to try to shift some of that is to um, share with them, you can take the, the training and get the, the fee that has been um, uh, historical, or you could work to get graduate credits for the experience that you have, um, which would limit that, that fee that's coming in. Um, be, some work being done on a summer institute potentially over the summer where we would offer a week-long training and a different variety of options for our teachers. Um, so our coaches are 
we, we have shifted from a model for the most part wherever possible before if you had a training that you need to do for teachers you'd have to send all the teachers out to get the training and and that got expensive across all the different schools now the model that we're trying to follow is that the coaches those two coaches go out get the training and then they bring it back and deliver to all our teachers which is a significantly less expensive model and those teachers have a coach right there with them in the classroom um, so i don't know if that answered your question jim but that's yes it does I just have yeah. another thought about the K-3 Spanish programs. Um, have we ever considered um, not doing the optimal for K-3 and just doing, say, one day a week for $70,000 for the year? I know that's that's over your 30000 30, but, you know, maybe there's also grant funding for language education in so a rural community. So, so while we were working on this budget, it really goes back to that with $33, you know, right. we were told many years that we do not want to be in the penalty phase. And we even looked at a one day a week class for the 15 or the half hour or whatever. But we only have, you know, once we hit all that $30,000, so we have to get a budget together. It goes right back to the grant process. Do you get the grant? Do you not? Mm -hmm. We're trying to put something in. If someone wants to go file the grant for one day a week, you know, we as the finance committee would love somebody to do that and possibly bring it in, but we're putting a budget together for the voters, and I don't think you're even going to bring in a part-time person with benefits for thirty thousand dollars. And I think that's that's how we approached it in the in the finance committee. <laughs> but it's not to say we can't look at these yeah. possibilities mm -hmm. for our future budgets. This isn't stuff that we have to rule out permanently for the next three to five years. It's things to say, okay, this is expensive. How can we alter that to maybe bring it in still to those K through three kids? How can we get that five days for our coaches? You know, there are ways we can continue to do that, but we'll have to give up certain things as well. Or we may see some revenue increases over the next couple years that will cover some of these things possibly down the road. Or the, or the bigger one we're talking about, if, and I'm not going to have Mary Beth go all this back, but where we said we're bringing all the all the staff up to, and I, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't want to say any specific staff, all the staff up onto one level of payroll. And there was like a 524 or 525 thousand dollar increase. Well, this is that last year of that. Mm -hmm. So you may be looking next year of saying, well, okay, now just the percentage that whatever negotiation works, let's say it's two percent. I'll get shot for that, but two percent. So let's say that's only two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Well, we were spending five sixty this year, so they could yeah. So you'll see some big changes. So there should be some savings, and we've had this discussion in finance, mm -hmm. but for this year. That's our recommendation. That's our recommendation. If you guys want to overrule the finance and say we want to go into the penalty phase, and so be it. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to add one thing from an education perspective. I talked to our SLT team about you know how how are people experiencing the shift that we made, um, and so I, I think the other thing that will inform this going forward is we will have had a couple of years of this particular model to see is it working is it not working and I can share with you initial feedback is that we see kids Spanish getting better and there's also concern about the amount of time that's coming out of class so um, in the, and I'm talking about the four through six so have we got it right yet I'm not sure collectively we felt it was really important to get a couple years of data particularly in terms of what are the teachers at the middle level experiencing when these kids come in after having it three times a week. So I, I think we would be in a position to report back to you what we've found about that um, in another year as well. Okay. So additional revenue opportunities and um, you had approved an $18,000 tuition rate for the high school. Um, if we move that up to 18.5, um, it would increase our revenues by $55,000. And we had hoped that if we approve that rate hike tonight, um, then that $55,000 would be applied again to the Buildings and Grounds Maintenance Fund. Um, 
then we have been looking at athletics and a participation fee. It's been a conversation that's been thrown around for, I'd say three to five years to be quite honest. Um, I know that when we were on the middle school, high school board, um, one of the uh, subcommittees for athletics was looking at a lot of different things, coaches, stipends, and so on and so forth. And this is one of the things that was brought up as, you know, if we had an athletic $50 participation fee, we'd also make available scholarship or financial aid to those who can't afford that fee. Um, but the projected revenues for the kids that are participating currently would be about 35 k um, That's the projected revenues. Now, if everybody didn't participate, it could be lower. So we thought that we'd take about 20 k to be applied to the Buildings and Grounds Maintenance Fund. If we took all of these revenues and some savings from decreases of spending from previous years, we would see an increase in our buildings and grounds maintenance fund from last year's 50000 and it would total about $250,000 for this year's fund. Um, we feel that it's really incredibly important for us to start building that fund because we now have six buildings, as well as what you had reported in what you're foreseeing for the next two years, and this will help support that as well as some of the decisions that we're going to make for Prosper. Um, and just FYI for numbers, in the fall we have 288 children participating, 198 in the winter, and 289 in the spring. That includes both middle school and high school children. So the total amount of participants per year is about 775 kids. So we've got a lot of kids participating in our athletic program. Yep. Would that be a fee per um, per sport? Per sport. Okay. Correct. Sport, sport, sport. So so yes. So while we were working on this here, you know, the increase in the tuition rate of eighteen thousand, we kept the eighteen thousand when we voted on for the middle school, high school, the same as last year. Um, the, the elementary school we have moved up this year. We've been moving up the middle school, high school. I think Ray would probably best know this. About five, I think we did 500 last year and 500 the year before. This year, for some reason, we kept it 18. We looked over, seeing where other towns are or other districts are. And the $500 per increase per year is, is right around on target or whatever. Um, it is costing us, you know, the, the state is the state has up the per pupil excess spending to 18,756. So we're still below that at the 18,005. That I agree with, you know, that that I think everybody on the finance committee had said, you know, we should put that back out to a vote. And we would hope that everybody would vote, but we also want to hear from one of the members of this district that does have the tuition children okay. that come in here okay. and, and then um, go right to 1876 you know <laughs> so we get a couple extra thousand you know but it's going to the buildings and grounds and I <laughs> hope that everybody will realize it's going to you, that stuff. you know the athletics I think we're all we're still trying to figure out the procedure on that and some of the questions were like you know so there could be a child that maybe could afford one sport the family but then three you know what is it is there a discount we said we were going to work out the procedure on that this is just working into a budget, and, and there would be, I mean, I think we really came, Ben, right? They're saying we would have to watch what we do. We do not want to deter people, students, from playing sports. That's not that's not the, the goal. And we, and we started at the $50 per child based on the recreation centers and what they charge for children up until they get into middle school and high school. So that's why we started at the 50. Um, we figured that this could be a pilot program and we could see was it successful or not successful um, and then determine whether or not it worked to the way that we had hoped we could help fund other programs within the budget. Sam? And I was going to say exactly that, that's how much you would pay and sign them up in elementary school age now. I was just curious, at the, at the rec center, I was just curious, is this common practice with a lot of high school, middle schools to do this? In, well, you've had that experience. Yeah, I can say in Massachusetts, you know, no, that's different than here in Vermont. But, you know, that's unusual for us, for people to ask us of the Yeah, 
Yeah, so Mike, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about your town. And At U32, where my kids go, uh, there is no participation fee that I'm aware of. But but this is, Sam, to your point, this is very consistent with all the youth level programs. Yeah. I mean, hockey, people who have kids in hockey, football is a lot more expensive than $50. The, the point is, from kindergarten th through, say, sixth grade, before they enter the middle school, these fees are, are very normal for, for youth sports. Um, Vermont's very unique in this way. Vermont's uh, kind of a, a no fee to play state by standard. Um, I don't know the regs on it, but it's um, I think it's one of seven states that has very low threshold for a fee to play. So I would recommend that a little bit more research go into it before the board takes action on it. Right. Uh, Q has I talked to Q about this, and he has got an email in to um, to investigate this and in ensure that this would be a legal. And these are things, this is why we're not voting on the budget tonight, yeah. so that we could take all of your questions and concerns and then apply them to our, our budget approval at our next meeting. Pam, she's had her hand up forever. Um, thanks. Um, it just, it seems a little funny, and I don't know, maybe it's done like this all the time, and, you, and I just don't know, but when I see a participation fee, I think it's to pay for the cost of participation. So would there have to be a sort of asterisk that says like this is going to the maintenance fund or you know something so that people aren't misled into thinking that they're paying for equipment and things that have to do with participating because it kind of seems like that the, the fee the fee is actually being used to offset the four hundred and seventy thousand dollar athletic budget by reducing the cost we can reallocate those funds okay to the building yeah age, but it is a reduction okay. in the expenses Okay, thank you. That's the purpose of the tuition. But I know what you're saying. Is it a direct <coughs> reduction of the 470 for athletics, or does it just reduce that funding and then it's applied to another but funding? Yeah, I, I see what, yeah. the way Mike explained it makes sense. Okay. Melina? I, I was wondering if he was part of the conversation. So I had a chance to, uh, this was a conversation that came up in finance committee um, and that group asked me to task him with getting these numbers. He had actually already presented all these numbers at an, an earlier meeting. I have met with him, I have um, explained what the finance committee is interested in doing and to Garen's point he did say that he would double check and be sure that this is something that would be appropriate. Um, he, you, know, I, I, you know, I think obviously we didn't get into whether he personally thought it was a good idea or not, but just he would get the information for the board to move forward with it or not. And our meeting with him again on Wednesday to cover a lot of these topics and to see what the opportunities are to, <coughs> right. if, if it's not a lot of work, where can we take cost out? I, I just, one, from Q's presentation, he's looking for more money, so I'd be pretty reluctant to, to <laughs> charge something for you to athletics and then. Even if he's being amiable to it, I, I still feel like he's he obviously said he could use more funds. And if you look at our equipment and the amount of money that actually goes into that after paying the coaches and stuff, it's pretty minimal compared to some schools. Um, uniforms could be due to be replaced, and certain sports look pretty pretty rough compared to the towns we're playing against. Um, so I wouldn't be a big fan. And even though people are used to paying those prices for youth athletics, it's not common in middle high school or at all. I'm not sure. And Woodstock, I would say, when youth athletics comes comes about, are, is one of the most expensive rec programs around period none of the ones around us cost as much as Woodstock okay. um, so when we started like in Byron which I know is really small but it was you know much less and we yeah. had higher participation um, but but I can tell you that Woodstock's quite a bit higher than Randolph Hartford other other very programs so I don't know if that's a great comparison um, yeah. so I'd be a fan of if we did it being a smaller fee and having it stay in the sports but well, I think another factor, too, is the number of sports we offer in the size of a high school. I think, you know, I used to talk to coach, um, previous coach, but we offer so many more sports per number of students we have. I think that's an important piece. So that $470,000 budget yeah. for a school the size of ours is pretty remarkable. So I think that's the other part of balance. We offer so many sports that many <coughs> schools are also offer. Lou? So one of the things you mentioned earlier, and I think it's important, the summer days for coaching, and I know this fits in with the model of you know, developing the coaches, more professional development, summertime, and you know, we've had a lot of uptick on that in the past, but one of the things you said, um, that $6,000 actually plays out to be a lot more money. Could you explain that? Is it just $6,000 or are there more expenses than that? Mary Beth? No, we, we, I think what Mary Beth was saying is that that whole 
is a whole lot. Or, or Paige might have said it, looking at the 220 for the, the 220 and then the um, 6 for the t for that and the 15. And that's why I jumped in and said, you know, we have $30,000 to move to without getting into the penalty phase. So uh, um, $100,000 under the penalty phase, as long as you're underneath, is one cent to the tax rate. So if it's six, I mean, it's, it's ridiculously low for that one. And that's mm -hmm. why we're putting it out. That's mm -hmm. why I want to be up front with you guys. So that's kind of what you're referring to. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. additional that, 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 That's six. That, if, yeah. if you guys came yeah. in and said, we want this five-day summer coach, $6,000, and we want to put in the $15,000 for the theater position, you're talking $21,000, OK? Mm -hmm. We have $30,000. To stay away 33, from Jim. thirty-three. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about like you know. So you have you no. Know, so you have right, and one cent is is a hundred thousand dollars. So you're talking, you know, point oh two five, point oh oh, you know, less than a, a quarter of a cent to get up to that twenty-five thousand dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we just wanted to leave it to to you guys. We wanted to hear your comments so that when we come back, we can fine tune the budget based on. Mm -hmm. Your we wanted to have one more finance committee meeting before you know right so then like the month is over a follow-up question then if um if you were to get to that hundred thousand dollars below threshold like, what would you take out that's a question for mary beth okay because i feel like on the spot mary beth, well no i i just feel like it's it's our it's our budget technically to present to the voters for their vote to approve or not approve the budget but within that budget I think Mary Beth and her team has to really think hard about how are we going to educate our children to the best of our abilities and give them the most rigorous curriculum program that we can and if you took out a hundred thousand dollars what are the sacrifices you make Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is a Mary Beth question, not a finance question. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, our thoughts were to give more opportunities for revenue so that we could offset that side of things. And we have to start getting creative at looking at possible revenue drivers um, because we're getting less money from the state every year. So it's going to be up to us locally to create those revenue drivers um, you know so I think for Mary Beth I don't know if you could just decide right off your cuff right now <laughs> what that would yeah, be I, I, but I just kind of asked I just think it's I'm not advocating but I just think it's an important like uh, activity to go through yeah to understand if we were to make that decision what does it look like it gives everybody here an idea of like what does it mean voters what does it mean the other question I have is that the $50 activity fee per sport, when we tack on a fee like that, does mm -hmm. that in any way, shape, or form move us uh, negatively to the state where they might penalize us for reasons that doesn't revenue. count? No, it's because okay. it's, it's on the revenue, revenue side. Yeah. Yeah. So if you looked at the beginning of the budget, it started off at like 21 or 20 million, whatever. Then you take all your revenue that comes in, and the revenue is donations and state and all the other um, stuff that comes in as revenue, and you count the total. Then then you subtract that number from the top number to get you this, and you divide the per pupil in. You know, the question that you just threw is like, if we had to find a hundred thousand dollar cut, where was it? I, I don't know if like some of the people in finance. I know Ben did because he's using it. We had that discussion, and, and it really came down to that the first screen here of, you know, this is what we're contractually for. And if this is what we're contractually for, so if you want 100000 right now, the 100000 if you didn't want to touch the contractual, would be taking away from the students for the actual learning. So we wanted to stay away from that. I think the finance committee has done a great job you know, keeping us away from that. But, but one thing that Bryce said here to me is, you know, here here we were thinking of um, finding <coughs> more money to the um, buildings and grounds, okay, to get that going. And when Bryce had said, you know, our uniforms or whatever, you know, there's nothing here to say that, you know, if we charge this fee instead of going to buildings and grounds, yeah, I would like this, but I know that our equipment is old and this and that and everything. And let's put that twenty thousand dollars towards uniforms or whatever. We had, I mean, this was the biggest. That that one right there. That was.
that was probably a 45 minute to an hour conversation and two times we've had this conversation and, and it's really a tough one you know, um, but that's something we could consider is throwing it back into the re into the site of the athletic department. It, it's neither here nor there. It, it's really we need money in almost everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just looking at buildings and grounds, right? Because that was the area that we were really coming up short on. I care about you, you can't you can't maintain your buildings with fifty thousand dollars, and and you sent us with Joe what your expected well we asked <laughs> <are>. <laughs> I asked okay. Joe, but asked. they sent us what the expected was I supposed to do are, are going to be looking at over the next two years and so that seemed like an area that we needed to focus on more and part of buildings and grounds is grounds and part of athletics is grounds yeah. so you know it's should going we, there should we move on so just, to, just, just to be clear, yeah. the athletic department budget this year, <coughs> the one that we're talking about, is actually in line with what we did in 19. The 20 budget, for whatever reason, there were some cuts in it that had reduced it. So when we look year over year, it's, it's up. We're up almost like, I want to say 40000 in totality. And there is money set aside for uniforms. I, I don't know, remember the exact amount, and I don't know if it's enough to buy every sport a new uniform, but there are funds, and that's up to Cute to manage his budget to determine whether it's equipment, uniforms, that's what he's responsible for, and that's what I'm going to help him with. So uh, there is plenty of money in the athletics department to buy a variety of things, including stipends for officials, transportation to get the kids where they need to go, the coaches' salaries. Th there is... I'm happy to go through it in a different session if, if that's what the board would like to do. No, I think he was presentation and Melina's point was just is, is he involved? And I think yeah. because yeah. he kind of came to us saying he could use more money just yeah. a few months ago. You know, I, that's I think thing what, what has been <coughs> really different over this process from the previous two years and now we're in our third budget round for a combined district which now includes Barnard as well is that this is the first year that we've gone line item by line item for an entire budget. And we hadn't been provided that line item by line item budget in the previous two years. So this, this budget process with the Finance Committee has been so detail oriented. And to have real numbers, not just, well, you may be able to spend this or you may, I mean, Mike has really worked on making sure that these are real numbers for us and that we know where we're dedicating our monies to. Um, and I think that we, because we've been able to go line item by line item, we've been able to really see where is our money being spent. Is it being spent on the majority for education? Is it being spent on contractual obligations? Is it being spent on health care? But like Jim said, after this next budget round, we're not going to be spending $525,000 on contractual obligations. You're going to see a very serious shift where either you're going to want to save those monies or you're going to want to reinvest them in the educational side of, for the kids. But that's a conversation for your future budget. So I'm going to move on. Ready? Okay. So when we look at the budget's financial <coughs> impacts, our total propo proposed budget for FY21 to the taxpayers is $17,096,833. Now that's subtracting the revenue that comes in. Actually, the actual budget's 20, 20, 21. 21, And you yeah. subtract the revenue. And you subtract the revenue, which is about 46, and that gets you to the 17. Um, the proposed FY21 budget represents an 8.18 increase, which is the $1.23 million um, increase over FY20. Equalized pupils are up 23 students, or 2.6% from last year. Does that include Barnard? Yes. Education spending per equalized pupil is up 4.1% or $740 per student. Act 46 tax incentives have dropped from 0.06 from FY20 to 0.04 for FY21. And we all knew that voting to come in. Correct. 
school budget portion of the homestead tax before the CLA is up 0 0.051 or point uh, or 3.16 percent so the state increased us by 0 0.051 this is not something that we control this is controlled by the state penalty phase for equalized for uh, pupil spending yeah. so, 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 so just to go back to that goes back to that page oh, there I'm sorry yeah. all right this is what we all this is what we're responsible oh, for okay um, we're responsible for this part here um, this is before the CLI so this is the increase that you show the eight point whatever blah 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 the students are up so that not knocks that eight percent down the per pupil spending goes up, so that's why all of a sudden that 8% shoots down to 3.16% yes. overall. Thank and of you. that nickel, of that nickel increase, I mean 75% yeah. is related to contractual commitments and the benefits that the state so, mandated. So, so, right. so, when, so when we saw, when we got that letter from VS, whatever that group is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they told us where it looked like taxes are going. You know, they basically told us straight up, we're looking at a 5.5% increase across what budgets have already been put into us, and we're looking at a $0.06 cent increase per. So we're saying here we're at 3.16%, and we're looking at a 0.051. So it's actually under. And this is where the state, all of a sudden, when all those budgets we were talking about, when they all start coming in that first week of March or whatever, we had this three years ago where the state told us we were going to go up like $0.09, cents and we only went up like five cents because everyone's budgets, they said that the people came together and actually didn't have the same increases that we're looking at the beginning. And that's why that extra time for voting helps so much because there are those variances that really, really do affect your tax rate. Because we don't want to, you know, that, that was almost like a scare that your tax rate's going to go up eight or nine cents and then in the long run it only went up five cents or whatever. So then when you look at the penalty phase per pupil spend, it's $18,756. Um, yeah, and then our, our proposed FY21 budget is $18,733. So you can see we're right close. Um, and, um, you know, Jennifer and I have always said you don't want to go into penalty phase because every dollar over you get charged two dollars for the dollar. Um, so we've always been very cautious of that. I think every chair has been in the past. Um, and so I think our best practice is never to try to go into penalty phase as we move forward. Um, so that's my presentation thus far, and now Jim is going to move into how this affects the tax rate for our community members. So when Paige was just speaking about the 0.051 cent increase, since everybody has you know, this mm -hmm. sheet in front of them here, we're sorry, Barney, we really don't know what your tax rate was this current year. I sent it to you. Yeah, I mean, we've got one that says 1.7977. <laughs> And then we've got an assistant clerk telling me 1.739. Oh, they have all these mistakes that yeah, they're working yeah. out. So, yeah. so okay. basically, <laughs> we're going to jump to the middle column here. All right. Everyone else, we know last year we were at 1.6299 because we were a, um, a MUD. Okay. So this year we're going up to 1.6813. That's what we have control of, where Paige was saying all those increases. That's what we have control of. And once again, that is that 0.051, all right, which equals the 3.16%. We're not really sure on the first town there because we have to get the, I mean, and, and it was because you weren't part of the part of it at this time. So we're going to jump to the next. You weren't part of the one? At the elementary On the elementary school. Now we're going to go with the CLA. So everyone is starting off this year with 1.6813. We have no control of the board of what a CLA is. I'm sorry, we don't. We can say right now that let's pick Bridgewater. Their tax rate is going down 3.98% from this current year. They're still going up that 3.16%. It's just that their CLA is adjusting. You know, we can then take a look at Woodstock 
and it says you that your total tax increase is going up 6.67 percent but that's because your, your houses are selling for more money than that they were the previous year and the state changes based on the sales that come through I mean that's all we have con we, we don't have control of that you know one year we can have our property values selling for less one year we can have our property selling for more um, I just stick to what we're responsible as a board is that first tax rate of the unified district tax rate and it's point one six eight one three compared to last year's uh, one point six two nine nine that's what our budget is doing to us and you just keep on pounding back on to well, why are we going up that 3.16 percent we have contractual agreements we have cost in um i mean oil is probably going back up again and a whole bunch of other stuff i mean that that's it i mean it's it's pretty simple if we're going to sit here and get into individual towns and say why does that town's tax rate different than my tax rate simple question simple answer cla we're all starting at the same level. That's it. Um, um, Lou's question before was about what was $100,000 off of the budget would equal. It's a penny. Every $50,000 over the um, penalty phase number is a penny. So you get a penny off for 100, you add a penny for 50 over. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff in this budget here, if we go all the way, uh, not, if we go all the way to the front page or whatever, I believe in the past what we have done when we talked about the 18 and 19, where it's all the way to the front, the 18, 19, um, no, the 18, 19, the, 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 um, the audits that we have. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so it's, uh, maybe it was the one before, maybe it was before that. It's before that. Yeah, before that. <coughs> No. Yep. Oh, it's before that. Yeah, it was yeah. yeah, okay. So the books, so January 10th, what would normally happen is the budget that we're in right now, 2020, was really run off of a 2018 audit. And we don't have the 18 done. But what we did do in this current budget is we brought $143,000 over of surplus so we built the 20 budget so we built the budget 20 budget we went off of the 18 what we were told was of hundred forty three thousand dollars surplus we're in the process of finding out if that is exact it's pretty close right so so what we're doing now is in 2021 budget that we're working on we have no surplus coming over and we have no deficit coming over until we find out what the actual audit is and that's my biggest question I back this budget a hundred percent if everything comes in that we're either zero or positive positive. and that's the hard part about putting this particular budget together because the FY19 books weren't closed nor was the audit completed. and we were hoping that we could get that vote pushed out to I was hoping for May but they were hoping for April, so that we would have that audit done at the end of January. Right. But even if the 19 audit results are important, right? But for that to be a carry forward into this year's budget, something would really have to go wrong. I mean, 19 would have to be a disaster, and I don't believe it's gonna be a disaster. And I say that because the way, uh, the way Ron Smith's team explained it to me on the phone is that your non-restricted funds would have to be completely depleted and go and go negative for you for us as a district to be forced to bring that carry forward into 21 I mean we're talking about hundreds of thousands of, of a deficit and those unrestricted funds I don't believe that's going to be the case so Jim's right we, we are going to get those 19 results done as quickly as we can but barring some disaster I, I feel good that the 21 budget is rock solid for the vote and all I'm saying is I'm voting 100% for the budget as presented <laughs> with a zero surplus or deficit that's it that's it Pam um, first I just want to echo Lou and say you seems like you've really been doing a good job on this um, 
But unless I missed it, there wasn't a list of, of new costs or additions to the budget and like we've had in the past. It was. There was? The six thousand and the and the, the six thousand, the fifteen thousand So that's it? That's it right wow. now. Wow. Lean and mean. Yeah. But okay. I mean what well, we had to <laughs> but but also the big one there was is that we, 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 we modeled this current year that everyone got an A P test and that ran into a little it was it was a little harder. It was complicated, to handle, complicated from an administration. So what standpoint. we've done is saying now that we're going to give it, we're still giving something, and we want our kids, and we figure we go to an SAT, and then we can use those scores as another benchmark. Okay. I mean, and and so we'll, we'll take care of that. <coughs> there, but you know, we're holding a lot of you know we we added a lot in the last three years, even the year before, we added a lot, and I think we've realized that this year we have to. Especially without having the audits done, we have to sit back and see. And I think to also, to too, we've had a lot of shifts over the last three years. That, I mean, this is our third year going, but we've had shifts educationally. We've had shifts in um, roles, responsibilities within our teaching staff, within um, principals, uh, admins, and so on and so forth. So I think it was really important for all of us to kind of take a breath and go okay let's get some feedback and some um, results to see how are we doing with those shifts and changes that we've made over the last two years and this will be the third year that Mary Beth can really say these programs have worked and been very successful for us for our children um, and these programs I'm not too sure about I may want to shift them and direct them into the other programs or, and expand those programs that are really working and we're seeing the benefits of it. <coughs> so I, I think this will be that third year so that she can have data to report back to us the following April um, to really be able to give us a real idea of how those monies were appropriated into those changes in programming and so on and so forth. Um, I, Any other questions? Because let's move yeah, on. No, I want to add one thing. Paige and Jennifer always tells us and reminds us that they're stepping down this year. Okay, Paige and Jennifer are also on the finance committee. So this next year will be their last budget. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm running. I'm only staying for this one year to keep somebody happy <laughs> over here to my left. But I will not run. I, I will short my term after this next one. So. Ben will be in finance. He'll be the uh, head of it. That's <laughs> 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 <I told> mine. <laughs> yes. uh, that new building. And <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just, as, just as some people you say what? that they, you know, running the meeting or whatever, a lot of this stuff comes out of this group here, and it's it's a lot of work. But we need you need at least three people, four people in there. Thank that's you. that's it for me. Okay. <clears throat> So let's move on to um, if I can have a motion to approve moving our tuition rate for FY21 18,000 to 185. I'd appreciate that. So moved. Do second. I have a second? Thank you. Any conversation we'd like to have or have we already had it? Okay. All those in favor of the motion on the table say aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion is passed. Thank you. Um, you want me to move to go into a second? Thank session? you. Second. <laughs> she need to say it. Okay, we're in executive session. Um, we need all of you to vacate the premises. <laughs> yes, we are coming back. Um, Okay, um, motion on the table um, to support the Finance Committee's recommendation to fund the $200,000 needed in remediation costs to move to the next phase of repair at the Prosper Valley School, and it would be funded through a combination of operating budget, loans, and private donations. I think the, I think the, the real motion is that we will interested in think, looking into and coming back with the fall. You said fund it. Are we definitely funding it? Is that the motion? We are, yeah, yeah. we are making the commitment We're to making fund it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so moved. Second. Second. <laughs> we got like thirds and fourths. Is there any conversation that would like to be had? 
I think we should just go through and tell the um, community what exactly we're talking about, so that there's, you know, that, that, that the, we're, we're saying two hundred thousand dollars towards Pomfret. We're trying to find a way between loans, budget, <coughs> private donations. What we're looking to do with that two hundred thousand dollars is the cleaning cost first of the of the complete building because before you put an HVAC system in, you need to have it cleaned. You don't want that HVAC system to take all the mold, the spores out. You want to get that cleaned first. We have an estimated cost of about forty four thousand dollars. Some of that cost is including um, taking down some of the um, cabinets and stuff. But we're also looking for a demolition crew or volunteers, and we have to check in to make sure first that it is <coughs> legal to do. Then we're looking at putting in an HVAC system. Um, we have a, a, a cost of 100K. That might be on the higher end, but that's what we're going with. Then we have a cost of $2,500 that we've already spent, I believe, Joe. For, 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 right now. For, for, for water meters. But it's in the current budget. But it's in the current, current yep. budget. And then there's a potential water main break. We don't know its potential, and we're going to find out if there is a water main break, and that's why we had to get the new meters. Correct. So once we have that information together, then we'll know if there's a leak or not. And the motion is to move forward with that. To be creative. I don't know if Joe wants to elaborate. Long story short on the, the water meters is that the, the, the amount of chlorine and stuff being used is for thousands of gallons. Last month, the meters read 124 gallons to the, yeah. to the buildings across the street. So obviously something's not correct. And you might want to get into the fact that the reason why the water system is running with a closed because of a contract that was placed correct. when the building was built. <laughs> they have an everything <laughs> contract with some folks across the street that uh, we provided with water. Um, they generally only use a few hundred gallons a month. And while we're under construction, um, I didn't run an awful lot of water in school. And what I generally do is, is dump thousands of gallons to keep that water fresh and everybody healthy and happy. But during construction, I wasn't able to do that. But I noticed that we were still using an awful lot of uh, disinfectant. And I noticed that my deep well pump had been running for about an hour a day, even though we weren't using water. So it was an indication that either the folks across the street have some faulty meters, or I have a break somewhere in the line going between the well and our two buildings. Hope they get to the bottom of it pretty quick, though. <coughs> Are we ready to move the motion on the table? All those in favor of the motion on the table, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is passed. We're moving to the next phase. All right. Um, what the hell is reflection? Oh, you did not. That was oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you reflect that we're, night? We're, we're, <laughs> Paige thinks everybody was here that night. She doesn't remember anything, so that's great. So we're all here. That's no. Nice. Jennifer started doing a reflection, and it's how this meeting went instead of how we used to do those surveys that nobody really ever really She started about. a reflection the week after that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd like the motion that we make the reflection for a total of one minute. <laughs> okay. Actually, be out of here before uh, nine o'clock. No, uh, before eight thirty. Yeah, yeah, we're, already we're not done with the reflection. Yet. I think the meeting went great. <laughs> I would love to hear a motion to adjourn. <laughs> no <laughs> Oh, you have to come to the next meeting. That's in the beginning. <laughs> Are you voting like for Clemson or are you voting for uh, LSU? LSU. No. <laughs> I like the tables spread open more that rather than this way. Well, the comment has been from the full board that they do not like being spread open because they don't feel like they can converse with each other. Yeah. And then the board says that we are here to run our meeting and it's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do I have a motion to exit this whole meeting? So moved. Second it. Thank you. We're out of here. Sure. <laughs> 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 We're supposed to hang on to it.